DBJ here. This is uh, the review of Within the Ring of Fire Part 2, and this one is going to be about the setting. And believe you me, the term dark in dark immersive uh, fantasy role playing game is extremely accurate. If you're a fan of dark survivor role playing games, um, post apocalyptic um, games that involve Things the closest one I can think of in relation to it would be Dark Sun, although this game is not a desert world uh, completely. It is very much reminiscent of um, movies like the Conan movies, Troy, Spartacus. Uh, there is, if you like post apocalyptic games, uh, you know, after the bomb, after the war. This game has so many dark elements of it. In it, uh, cyberpunk, Shadowrun, and what I mean by dark is that there are so many factions that are against each other. There are races that are cannibalistic. There are races that have a culture that uh, cherishes slavery. That there's a point where these dark immersive games have you realize the value of the small things that bring joy and peace to your life. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're playing a, uh, a dark survivor game like uh, post-apocalyptic and there's uh, zombies and the world's overrun by zombies. E eventually you start to realize that the small things matter much more than the larger context. Say, fresh fruit, um, the trust of a uh, friend that has survived with you for a long time, um, a book of poetry, just having the sun shine on your face for five minutes and leaving all your worries behind. This game is fully I don't want to use the word immersed, is so fully developed and has such a dark tone to it that it can become so oppressive, and especially in games like Cthulhu, Cyberpunk, um, these kind of games, uh, even Vampire the Masquerade, that you start to cling on to those things for your character and in the game that shed a little bit of light into it. And I've realized this now with why people are such fans of other games like like Cthulhu, like, you, you know, Paranoia, which is a little bit sillier, um, games like Cyberpunk, because I feel that those games make you realize that having five minutes of peace um, to yourself or finding an NPC or an ally that you can really count on in a world where everyone is out for themselves or a game where there are just so many things trying to hunt you down that just being able to enjoy a nice meal with uh, family and friends even on the run uh, can be cherished and this game fully engages that it makes no the one thing I'm really proud about this game and the setting is that there's it makes no apologies for its darkness. And I understand that the larger games, meaning like um, when uh, White Wolf was on top of the world, um, Dungeons and Dragons, they tend to be either vague in their setting so that players can create their own uh, universe or they will establish a caveat for the type of characters you play. They, the, in the game, it will say, well, hey, we're, we're adding anti-paladins. But they'll put a little caveat on the end and say, well, we don't suggest players play these characters because they are very dark and evil um, unless you get GM approval. This game does not make any, it, any bones about the fact that, hey, I'm playing a character that eats people. I'm playing a character that engages in slavery. That's it. And 
there are so many factions that are uh, both against other factions and uh, making treaties with others that y you can really delve into this um this setting. Now, let me get into the, the physical part of the setting. This is not your mama's D&D game. Uh, first of all, as mentioned by other reviewers, the world is not a round ball that floats around the sun. It is a s giant, massive cylinder, and the world that you're, the characters are involved in is literally surrounded by a ring of fire. If you travel far enough across this flat world, like a flat cylinder, a soda can, you will f bump up against a wall of fire, a literal ring of fire around the entire world. And the dark portion of it involves something that I've actually felt quite uncomfortable about adding into, into my D&D games, and that's um, uh, the idea of gods and deities. Now, um, as I've said before, I like to create, not destroy. So this really spawned a creative um, spark in me, because in, especially in Dungeons and & Dragons as, uh, and Pathfinder, although they have rules and elements for using clerics and paladins as um, using deities in the game, they tend to be something that if you delete it, it doesn't affect anything. This game is so much, so much a part of the gods that the very length of the days and each day, there are 77 days, and all 77 days are considered one cycle. Each day is the day of one of the gods. And the length of that day, the length of sunlight and darkness in each day, changes per god. I, I, I love that effect. I love that, that and, and it, I don't want to say there's no rhyme or reason. Those 77, cycle, uh, 77 days in that cycle are regular, but there is a period of time where there's like 48 hours of complete darkness and 48 hours of sunlight. Um, those that know more about the game, correct me if I'm wrong, I've, at least that's the way I read it. But each day would be different. One day may have 10 hours of sunlight, the next day 16, the day after that 12, the day after that 14. It's each day is different, and that that brings so many elements into it because having seventy seven different deities to me felt daunting. It was like, man, that's that's a whole hell of a lot to have to have to uh, figure out and study. And then after reading through the setting, um, what there is of it and the races, I it just sparks so many ideas. Um, Similar to what I think of descriptions in Greek mythology, the gods in this game are an integral part of the world. Uh, people, all the races and the cultures, live their lives in one way or another, whether they are extremely devoted to the gods or whether they could care less about them. It affects their daily lives every single day. And the most notable way are are the days, the, the hours that they have of, of daylight. They know when true darkness falls upon the land. Uh, so much so that um, the human tribes that exist, and humans are not a dominant species in this world, each of those tribes has a day dedicated to the deity that they were born under. Um, it, it, it's just an incredible world. I know there were com some complaints about, not complaints, but hey, this doesn't have a magic system. And not that there won't be a book about it, I can guarantee there will be. I will say that it was a gamble not to make uh, Within the Ring of Fire a complete book. It was a, it was a complete gamble, I, I will admit. To, to put out a role-playing book and say, hey, I believe that the information presented is, is good enough that you will want more. And 
I have to say that he has actually succeeded in that. Um, I'm, I'm guaranteed to buy each book that comes out because I want to know more. I've said before, this is a double-take book. There's no way you can quickly flip through it. Like I said, I have the PDF version. But there's no way you can quickly flip through it and go, yeah, I know what this is about. It's, it's pretty easy to figure out. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, the, um, the fact that, there, that the, this one book does not have a magic system does not preclude the game from having magic in it. The, because it is a, a dark fantasy setting, the fantasy portion of this is that there are places in the world that have lots of magical influences. For example, there is a huge desert slash ocean where the sand is a shocking blue. There's a location where there's a race of people that live in the bone bones of a dead god it's like living i just imagine the city um up around and living around this giant rib cage and skull and um and vertebrae there's a uh, elements in this that that just sparks so much information and it really relates to i'm relating this back to what i said in the beginning about this is a dark immersive fantasy game I cannot stress to you how dark this game is. And if you are one person who loves to play in survival-type games, um, like I said, the closest analogy I can come up with is Dark Sun, you're going to love this game. Um, there's a lot of political intrigue. There are places... Um, I'm just getting through the second game of uh, with in the Ring of Fire, the video series that... Uh, the main man put out um, or linked to and um, I was extremely impressed by the everyone involved in it the characters that were created um, how much depth there was without falling back on the typical tropes of fighter cleric thief never falling back on how much gold do I have how many magic items do I have Never falling back on, hey, what's my armor class? Um, hey, I'm, I'm a perfect archer. None of that came. It was so anti-D&D &D that, um, that I just became a, a complete fan. So I hope I'm able to give this uh, review um, the credit that it's due. Um, I want to thank you guys for supporting me. And yes, I will be doing a video series thanking those who make uh, some excellent uh, comments. So again, this is part two of my review of Within the Ring of Fire. This is about the setting. And guys, have a good day. Thanks for your attention. As always, create, don't destroy.